Do you know you can create actual 3D title intro in After Effects without using a single plugin? And not just that, you can even add textures to it, making it look professional and cinematic. Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting After Effects tutorial. In today's video, I will create this. So we are in After Effects. Let's start with creating a new composition by clicking this box. Name this composition as Main Comp. I set full HD resolution for this and the frame rate is 30 for a cinematic look. Next, select the text tool and write anything. For example, Mufasa. Align this text to the center. For your reference, I use this font and make sure your paragraph setting is set to center text. Next, make this layer a 3D layer. Then, open text properties. Here, click this icon and choose tracking. After that, change the tracking amount to 40 at the first frame and add a keyframe. Move the time indicator around 5 seconds and change the tracking amount to 20. Then close this layer and add a camera into this composition. Let's see the camera settings. I am using a 50mm lens. Also, I am using a two-node camera. Now add a null object and rename this as a camera controller. Select the camera layer and parent it to the null object. Don't forget to turn on the 3D option. Then open the position properties of this null, so we can animate the zooming effect. First, add a keyframe at the first frame, then change the Z value to 1657. Move the time indicator around 6 seconds and change the Z value to negative 474. This will create a nice zoom out effect. Alright, now add a solid layer, name this layer black and set the color to black. Then animate the opacity value to reveal and hide the title. Next, go to Composition Settings, go to the 3D Renderer menu and make sure you selected the Advanced 3D option. By default, it's Classic 3D, so change it to Advanced 3D. Now select the text layer and open its properties. You can see this geometry option is visible, simply open it. Under this, change Bevel Style to Convex Bevel Depth to 1, Hole Bevel Depth to 10% and Extrusion Depth to 30. Then close this geometry option. Next, open the Material option. Under this first turn on these options, then change Ambient to 0, Diffusion to 0, Specular Shininess to 40 and Metal to 0%. Next, close the Material option and click this icon. Then select Enable Per Character 3D. After that click this icon once again and select Rotation so that three rotation values are added to this layer, but we only want to change the Y rotation. So, set the time indicator at the first frame and set the Y rotation value to around 70 and add a keyframe. Then move the time indicator to four seconds and change the Y rotation to zero. This looks exactly as I want. Next, close the layer and it's time to add some lighting. So right click and add a light. In this menu you can see five types of lights. Simply choose Spotlight. Name this light as Corner Spotlight. Click on the color options and use this color code for accuracy. Next, set the intensity to 1240. 
and the rest of the settings on your screen, then click OK. After adding a light, our text glows up. For your convenience, I am telling you the exact values of everything. You just need to follow me and put the exact value I'm using. First, place it above all the layers. Then, open the position properties. Now change the X value of position to 2170. Then set the Y value to 468 and the Z value to negative 662. As you can see, our spotlight is shifted to the right side. Next, open the rotation properties of this light and place the time indicator at the first frame. Then change the Y rotation to negative 15 and add a keyframe. Then move the time indicator around this point and change the Y rotation to 0. Next, move the time indicator around 6 seconds and change the Y rotation to negative 1.2. After that, open the light options and set the time indicator at this mark and click on the stopwatch of radius. Then set the time indicator at 6 seconds and change the radius to 1250. Go back to 4 seconds and this time add a keyframe on intensity. After that, go to 6 seconds and change the intensity to 712%. Then close this layer. Now add another light. Name this light as Front Spotlight. Color is the same as we used before. Change the intensity to 0. The rest of the settings are on the screen. Open its position properties and change the values. For X set to 813. For Y set to 460. For Z set to negative 693. Then place the time indicator at 1 second and open its light settings. Add a keyframe on intensity. Then move the time indicator to 4 seconds and change the intensity to 500%. Now close this layer. Once again, add another light. But this time choose an environment light. Set the intensity to 18%. If you want shadow in your scene, you can turn it on. It's optional. Then click OK. Now place the time indicator at this point, add a keyframe on intensity and change it to 0%. Then place the time indicator to 6 seconds and change the intensity value to 50%. Then place it at 7 seconds and change it to 150%. Then close this layer. It's time to add a flare to this scene, so I quickly import the flare image. By the way, you can download this flare by the link in the description below. Simply add this to the composition, then pre-compose it. Name this composition Flare, check this icon and click OK. After that, place the time indicator at this point and change the flare position to something like this. Now scale it down a bit around 73 to fit this composition and add a keyframe on scale. Then place the time indicator at this point and change the size to 0%. And lastly, place the time indicator at this point and change the scale to 0 it's almost complete. Next, add a final light to this composition and this time choose Point Light. Name this light Flare Point Light. Change the radius to 500 and also change the falloff distance to 500 as well. Then set the time indicator at this point and open the light options and add a keyframe on intensity. Change the intensity to 0. Move the time indicator to the second keyframe and change the intensity to 3000. Then, move to the 8th second mark and change the intensity 500. Now expand the composition view and change it to two views so that we can see two views at the same time. The left side is our active view, which is our main view. And currently, the right side view is left, as you can see it's mentioned here. So, I want to see the top view of this 3D composition. To do that, I go to this option and click it, then I select Top View. Right now, we are seeing the text from the top, but we can't see the light axis. 
So go back to the timeline and select the light layer to see it. And now we can see the position of the light. Now I simply select the Z axis and drag them like this. So you can see on the left side how it affects the text. I want to place it below the text on flare. So I select the Y axis in the left view and drag it down. Also adjust it slightly. Check the animation by dragging the time indicator. Everything looks good. So I change the two views option to one view. After that, select those keyframes and easy ease them. It will smooth the lighting effects. All right. So I just saw that flare is cut out from both edges. So to solve this problem, click this icon. Then select all layers and press U to open all keyframes. Select all the keyframes and easy ease them to get a smoother animation. After that, I select the camera controller layer and open its position properties. Then select the first keyframe and open the graph editor. Then change the graph like this. Check the animation and close the graph. It's time to add a texture to this text. Let's see how to add a texture to this. First, import a texture image in After Effects. After importing it into After Effects, add it into the composition. Pre-compose this texture image, name this composition, Texture, check this icon and click OK. Open this composition and change the scale value to around 30%. Next, make it a 3D layer, then go back to the main composition. Select the camera and null object, copy it and go to the texture composition and paste it here. After that, select the texture composition panel and place it here. This way we can see two timelines together. For your reference, this one is the texture timeline and this one is the main comp timeline. Open the null position properties of both layers. Then hold Alt and click on the stopwatch to open the expression window. Then grab this pick whip tool and drag it to this controller position. Click anywhere to confirm. Now this null position value is parented to this controller. Now you can delete this keyframe because it's connected to the original null. Now select the texture composition panel and add it back to this panel. Now go back to the main comp and hide the texture layer and go back to the texture layer. Next, add a solid layer, name this as color. Then put this color code to get the perfect color. Place it above the texture image then change its mode to color. Then select the image and go to the effects panel and search for an effect called auto color. Apply it to this layer to get this look. It's too sharp, so I decreased the opacity to 50%. Nice. Now go back to the main comp and select the texture layer and place it above the text layer. I did this because some of my viewers use older versions of After Effects and in older versions, the Track Matte options are different. Alright, so now change the Matte option to Alpha Matte so the texture is applied to our text. After that, click this icon or change it to Luma Matte to get a realistic look. Let's see the animation. It's almost complete. Let's make a new composition with the same settings. Name this composition as Animation. Then add Main Comp to this composition. Add an Adjustment layer. Then go to the Effects panel and search for an effect called Curves. Simply apply it to this layer. After that, adjust the curves just like this to enhance the colors. And that's it. We successfully created a cinematic title intro in After Effects without any plugins. Now it's time to see the benefits of using the text layer for the title.
If I go to the main composition and select the text, we can rename or change this text very easily. And the rest of the things are the same. So you don't need to do it again if you want to render out any other text. Also, you can use any font you want. That's so cool, right? If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, consider buying me a coffee. Your support makes a big difference and helps me keep creating awesome content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.